Hi guys, we're gonna get started in about one minute, just to let some last minute people jump on and we'll get things rolling. So bear with us. All right, let's get things cooking. Hi, and welcome to our webinar today, Data to Insights in 15 Minutes, um, Automating Insights with Explain, which I am super excited to watch today. My name is Chris Banks. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Pyramid Analytics, and I am with one of the most amazing software engineers that we have today, who I will kick this over to and just buckle up and put your seatbelt on. You've got some great things to come up. The one thing that we do ask of you is to reserve or hold on your, your any questions that you've got till the end, and then we'll open that up for Q&A. Um, but other than that, it is a great day at Pyramid Analytics, and we're excited to share with you some amazing things that we just recently added to our product, particularly our explain feature. So that being said, I'm gonna pass the ball over to Andy Cooper. Andy, take it away. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Before we get into the main part of today's session, just in case anyone is new to Pyramid, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're all about. Our award-winning AI-driven platform combines the very best of data prep, business analytics, and data science in a single unified environment. More importantly, we enable users of any skill level or role within an organization to get access to the data they need to make faster, more informed decisions. Today's session is on our new explain feature, and that for me perfectly showcases how easily we can bring business analytics and data science together for end users. So let's take a look at our, our use case today. It, it's probably very common to everyone on the call, but in simple terms, at some stage in our careers, we've probably all been asked why. And it's more than likely that it's more in the context of why is this number bad? But I, I would like to hope that it could also be because the numbers are so good. Who knows? I've, I've worked with customers in the past um, and they, they come to meetings with binders full of printouts, their numbers, their trusted information but they actually know their data so well they can instantly tell you the answer they don't even need to open those binders but not everyone is fortunate to have that knowledge sometimes the answer comes from gut instinct rather than any kind of particular facts and maybe sometimes we have to take that answer away and it could of course also be new information it could be data that's unfamiliar to us and no one really knows you know what to look for to find those particular answers and in the end, most of us probably end up drilling down into that data and it can be like looking for a needle in the haystack to find the answer. Maybe we spend hours or even, God forbid, days going down blind alleys and maybe we don't even get the answers that we need. Um, and if we do, maybe they're not in a timely fashion. So this is where today, hopefully, um, we think at Pyramid, we have that solution. And apologies, I, I, I couldn't resist the, the pun here. I'm gonna put it down to my English sense of humor, but let's, let's look at explaining more detail. Uh, Pyramid's AI-driven explain feature allows users to dig directly into their source data with a single click. Gives them faster insights into key drivers and influencers through automated analysis with little effort. Rather than manually drilling into the data using intuition, or educated guesses to find what's driving results, explain automatically determines the elements that contribute to a data point's value. So let's take a look at explain in action. So I'm just switching out to my, my browser window here where I have uh, my pyramid instance, just to orient you with the platform very quickly. On the right-hand side, we have tutorials for all of the components within the platform. You'll notice that they're color coded. So uh, you'll see familiar colors that signpost what type of content that you're looking at. In the middle, I have access to things like my favorites, my recent activity. And on the left-hand side, I have access to the content that I can work with within the platform. 
This is all controlled via security. So I only see the content that I'm supposed to see. But for the purposes of today's use case, what I want to do is go in and uh, just very quickly, I guess, take you through what it's like when a user is building that first visualization. So we'll, we'll take a look at the, the, the good old traditional way of doing this work at the moment. So if I go into my payments analysis data, the, the task that I have in front of me is to understand my payments and how they're broken down with the different payment types. So I have my monthly charges and I'll just add those to the canvas. And we want to look at our payment method as the additional analysis. Let's add that too, and let's make that visual with a bar chart. So that, that's the traditional way of doing things. That's the, that's the way that I might well be working with this data. If this was the first time that I am looking to answer that particular question, but this could also be the visual that's been presented in a meeting. And then I'm asked that additional question. Why is it that credit card is so high compared to other values, for example? Now I could go away and I could do more with this data. I could build five, 10, 50 more discoveries and, and look for things that I think are significant. I could quite easily go into my visualization and swap values, add additional context, or even slice and dice. In this instance, let's make the most of explain. And you see here, it's a single option. I can just click and that brings up our analysis straight away. Now on the left hand side, we have what we call our eyeball chart. And this shows us in this instance, the values that mostly explain the data. Um, on the other tab, which I'll, I'll come back to um, shortly, we have something that explains us the influences within the data set. But let's focus in on what we're looking at at the moment. So we can see on the eyeball chart that the most um, significant data set that I'm seeing here is, is users in my, in my customer data profile that are on paperless billing. So they are the most significant um, factor in my data set. Within that, we then see that it's customers that have multiple phone lines. And then within that, it's customers that have streaming TV. So it gives us an understanding of what's significant within my data. Now you'll notice as I'm clicking through on the side panel, the view is changing as well. So that is fully interactive and that's producing additional context and that's automatically generated. So if I want further information about my data, that's presented to me. But in addition, this is also interactive. So if I want to change any of my values, I have that same capability. So let's, let's go back to streaming TV as an example. I can see that the breakdown between my customers that have streaming TV and those that do not. If I want to see a breakdown of what types of contract they're on, for example, I can just swap the value out and instantly see that view in the data. So if I want to do my own analysis, once I've been presented with the results of Explain, again, really straightforward, but also we've got the little save icon there. So if I want to actually work with this moving forward, single click, I can save that and come back to it as we go through. So that's giving us the view of, of where our data is mostly coming from. This is our dominant drivers. If I click on the second tab, this shows us the factors or the influences. And this is telling us on average, what makes the value higher. This is giving us the impact within the data. And I guess the way to, to think about this is that it can give us a different understanding of the data. If I, if I go back to that initial view, we see here the where paperless billing is the dominant driver within this data set. Now within my business, I may well already know that we've been pushing customers toward paperless billing for maybe many years. And therefore it's not a surprise that with that breakdown of data, uh, you know, paperless billing is dominant within that data set. But when we look at the values that are modifying the average value, that's where we can gain perhaps some additional insight that might not have been known to us before. So we see here that those customers with streaming TV are on average you know, 1.2 times likely to um, in have increased monthly charges. And then within that, those customers are most likely to be then um, seeing fiber optic as their primary uh, choice of uh, delivery. 
and ultimately then within that, those customers that have streaming movies. So this could well be insights that we weren't aware of before, but it's focusing our attention on where to look and where the, the data points are most significant. Now, everything so far has been driven about those areas of significance. But what if I want to see more in my data? Well, of course, that's something we can do. And up top of the screen here, we have our more button that allows us to go in and see all of the data hierarchies that we've analyzed as part of this view. Now, it's very easy to, to, to understand the flow of the data once we have this view. And this is giving us what we call a decision tree framework. And if I want to see all of my values, I can quickly click at the top here and expand all of my components. So I can see everything within my data. Let's just make that a little bit easier to see on screen. We can see all of those values and we can understand where all of those dominant drivers are coming from within my data set. Now at this point in time, if I want to modify this view, I have those capabilities as well. So if we look at the settings here, I can actually go through and you know, potentially change the number of branches, change the number of levels, for example. So if we say we wanted to extend that to five levels and apply like that so, we now begin to see that we've got a much deeper analysis. So there really isn't any limit to the amount of, of review of the data that we can do. And it gives us that capability to see what this data looks like without having to go away and, and build lots and lots of views of the data. But what I really like about this view, it's not just giving us access to all the content, but I can also very quickly change things to switch my objective. So let's look at the values that are low in the data set rather than the values that are high. And again, with a single click, we can just change that view and begin to understand where the, the kind of lower influences of our data are. So in, in this sense here, we can see what, what are the less dominant values. So, you know, in, and this, this is quite a deep tree now, we've got five levels. So we see here that, you know, customers that don't have dependents on a two year contract, no partner. This is, this is the, the, the thread that we start to see and we can begin to understand our customer data in much more detail. So very quickly, we can go from some high level views of things like drivers and influencers, being able to look at the, the, the full thread of our data and understand exactly what's impacting those values, both in terms of drivers and indeed through those influencers as well. This is the one of the ways that we can expose this view of the data to end users. I'm just gonna close this view down for a second. The other way that we can allow users to make use of this explain feature is actually via our AI chatbot. So I'm just gonna open up the chatbot panel and I can just simply type questions and modify the views of my data. But with the explain, I can also just type in a quick question. In this example, why mail check is low and execute that query. And it gives me that visibility of that same text analysis generated on demand and gives me that you know, instant analysis of why in this case, mail check is particularly low. So as an end user, I don't need to have any specialist skills. I just need to be able to type in a question. And I always like to think this is where, you know, people in this modern era of analytics are used to working with tools like Google asking questions. So, you know, the simplest way of exposing this content to users by simply typing natural language really does enable users of any capability to start asking questions of their data in this way. So just to, to wrap up really, and, and give you a quick summary of what we've been talking about so far. Hopefully that's given you a taster for what Explain can do. Um, I, I see a lot of people talking about AI in the analytics space, but are they actually using it to make data-driven decisions? And you've seen with a single click, we can quickly get answers to questions that might take hours or even days to find, but more importantly, you've seen how accessible these insights are to normal users. And I like to think of it as a bit like having a data scientist in your back pocket. So I hope you've enjoyed that, that quick overview and to explain. Um, I'm now gonna hand back to Chris to close out the session and begin the Q&A.
Thank you, Andy. I love that back pocket data scientist. I might have to steal that. That's a, such a great phrase you have there. Um, so folks, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, question uh, panel and we'll address it. If we don't have time to address all the questions today, we certainly will get back to you. So please know that as well. And it looks like we have a question for you, Mr. Cooper. So we'll see if you have an answer for it. Um, does this work with any data set? And do you need to put this in a data mart or a data warehouse first to use explain? Okay, thanks, Chris. That's a, a great question. So in this first release, this, this works with any SQL-based data sets. So if you're working with OLAP-based sources or um, Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft OLAP or indeed things like SAP BW, then currently the capability doesn't exist in the platform. This is you know, a product that's been out only a couple of weeks, so we are, you know, we will be looking to develop this in the future as well. So I think I think there's a hope that we can address uh, some of the Microsoft um, OLAP capabilities in the future. But if we look at SAP BW, for example, then when we're connecting to that, we're, we're connecting to a summary view of data. We're not actually connecting to to the base transaction. So we don't envisage it ever working with. Um, uh, aggregated data in SAP BW because it doesn't have the right level of granularity to perform that analytics. And, and apologies, Chris, I've, I've forgotten the second part of your question there, so if you wouldn't mind. No, of course, of course. The second part of the question was, um, do you need to put this data in a data mart or a data warehouse first before using it? No, not at all. I mean, this this can be used on any data set that Pyramid has access to. So that could be file-based data sources. We could be uh, querying that data directly from the data source. So it, it, it doesn't matter where the data lives. Uh, I mean, certainly uh, the thing I would say is that obviously, you know, performance, uh, you know, data has mass, it has inertia. So depending on where your data is, it's, it's clearly going to, you know, Im impact how the performance runs, but that's the same of, of, of any data. So I think, you know, I always advise caution on where your data sits. We want to have data that is in a, in a, in a platform that is suitable for the analytics you want to, want to perform it on, but um, fundamentally no limitation in that sense. Awesome. So, so just to reiterate, I mean, direct query can go right against any type of SQL-based data with Explain. Indeed. Indeed. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, next question that came in is, do you see any limitations to how this could be used? I, I mean, I, I like to think that in theory, the world is, is your oyster when it comes to data, but I, I will always advise caution when it comes to, to this type of, of capability, because again, the, the quality and the, the, the size of your data is, is going to play a part in this. So you know, let's be honest. I mean, if, you know, if, I, if I take uh, a download of uh, my credit card statement, which has maybe you know, three columns of data and maybe only 100 rows, I'm not going to get any particularly meaningful insight. So I think the one thing I would always say is that the richer your data, the more you're going to get out of this type of capability. So if we're looking at customer data, and you've got a lot of information about your customer types, you've got a lot of depth in the products that you're working with, you're going to get good analysis from this. But if you have a limited data set, fundamentally the results you see from this will be limited too, more than likely. Outstanding. Thank you, Andy. Um, the next question, actually, Andy, if you want to advance to the next slide, because sure. it's going to apply to that, how do I learn more information about Pyramid Analytics, which okay. is a great way to end this. <laughs> um, it, first of all, if you go to our website, right, pyramidanalytics.com, you'll find a plethora of information. But one of the part of the landing page that you see here, really, we allow you to choose whatever adventure that you want to go on with us. And I know it can be very intimidating when you're working with software vendors and getting inundated with phone calls and emails, but we allow you to choose your own adventure, whether it's taking our one day data to insights challenge where we take your data and paint a vision of your data and share some insights that maybe you didn't know about your data at no cost, you're welcome to take us up on that. The other one is schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. 
And if you're fortunate enough to get Mr. Cooper, props to that. But we have some great SEs in the company, and we'd be more, more than happy to give you a more in-depth look at the power of our platform. As Andy had mentioned, it brings together data prep, business analytics, as well as data science, all on one holistically grown platform. And then the last one is downloading three of our analyst reports, um, particularly about us, where we have gotten rave accolades um, in the eyes of Dresner Advisory Services, BARC, as well as Gartner's Critical Capability Report from 2021, where we were ranked number one for visual self-service analytics. So if you're interested in any of those, feel free, or all of them. Hey, you might be bold enough to say, I wanna do all three and just click away and engage with us. But we want to thank you for your time today. Hopefully you found this very insightful about some of the power of what you can do with our platform. Um, we do a lot more of other things around analytics that we'd be more than happy to share with you. So thank you for your time today and have a great day.